Good morning. It's 9.30 and welcome to session W20, Pecha Kucha, presenting 20 slides for 20 seconds each. You guys should all know the ropes by now. Silence your phones, please, so you won't interrupt the speaker or the folks around you. And everybody has the app downloaded to be able to do the evaluation. Does anybody not and maybe need some help with it? We're all good? Okay. So welcome again. And I wanted to introduce Craig Plain. Craig Plain, PhD, has over 20 years experience in process improvement and training. As a matter of fact, he started his training career when he was in fourth grade, um, helping out some students with uh, teaching some projects um, for their classmates. Um, he did graduate from college, earned his commission in the Air Force where several of his training programs were adopted throughout the service. And this included a unique class that combined teaching with the tenets of process improvement. Um, Craig has done Master Black Belt. He's an author, an award-winning speaker, and an amateur cartoonist. And um, hopefully some of you caught his After Five session on Monday on cartoons and enjoyed that session. He's facilitated events at all levels, from enterprise-wide transformation to shop for Kaizans. He's done over 200 improvement events for General Electric, the U.S. Air Force, the U.S. Navy, and other organizations. So um, Craig's been involved in training, development, and delivery at several Fortune 100 companies, the military, universities. He's presented at conferences for International Society for Process Improvement, Academy of Human Research Development, and the American Association for Adult and Continuing Education. Please help me welcome Craig Plain. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, gifted animals of all ages, my name is Craig Plain, but most folks, most folks call me Doc, and I'm pleased as punch to be here to guide you on a history of quality. We're going to start from prehistoric times through the Industrial Revolution to modern times, highlighting the people, concepts, and theories that bring us here today at the ASQ conference. In prehistoric times, Man has always been looking to improve themselves, whether standardizing units of measurement, though not really smart to do it off of a leader's limb length, uh, standardizing coinage, which allows for commerce and barter, but really quality as itself kind of came into highlight in the Middle Ages with the creation of guilds. Now we're gonna focus mainly on the United States, that's because that's what I'm familiar with, and to realize that before the Industrial Revolution, you have to realize there are some major differences between northern and southern states. Pay attention to the rivers, that comes important later. 1730, Virginia, just an example of quality, Virginia passes a tobacco inspection law. Their tobacco becomes so valuable, their inspection notes become used as currency. Maryland's gotta pass a similar law to catch up. 1700s, England starts Industrial Revolution, Realize there's four prerequisites for factory production. You gotta have the machines, you have to have something to power it, you have to have those interchangeable parts to fix those machines, and you have to have some type of continuous process or assembly line. The United States wanting to capture that industrial revolution begin to look out. We actually resort to industrial espionage. Samuel Slater, apprentices in England as a teenager, comes to the United States under an assumed name as 21, starts up a textile factory. Francis Cabot Lowell goes to England under health circumstances, memorizes machine layouts, brings them back. Those small rivers in the north, they provide the power, which is why you see more machinery in the north rather than the south. Interchangeable parts, Eli Whitney, better known for the cotton mill, takes a government contract in 1798 to produce 10,000 muskets. He's supposed to do them at 28 months. At 24 months, he hasn't produced a single musket. Instead, he produces jigs, standardized parts. Eventually, he overruns the contract, overruns the cost, go figure government contract, right? Still makes money to establish Whitneyville. The assembly line, most commonly referred to Henry Ford, which we'll talk about a little bit later on, actually starts with Oliver Evans. He creates a uh, flour mill. You dump wheat in one end, untouched by human hand, flour comes out the other hand. Also, we see the development of a management system known as the Waltham system, where we see non-technical people becoming to take leadership roles in organizations. Now, besides the, the, the uh, production, you have to have the markets. So here you can see a map of New York with the Erie Canal, how that opened up markets. We also see advertising, this being my favorite, Walcott's pain, uh, instant pain annihilator. 
I wish I had some of that right now. And then also the Civil War brought about standardized clothing as they measured uh, Union soldiers, so we see off-the-rack clothing. Also laying the foundation, Adam Smith, the invisible hands. Carl Frederick Grouse trying to determine the diameter of the moon comes up with a central limit theory and bell curves, important to Six Sigma. Frank and Lilith Gilbreth, cheaper by the dozen, time and motion studies. And Frederick Taylor brings forth scientific management and is considered the world's first uh, business consultant. The assembly line, most notable with Henry Ford, he supposedly gets the idea of touring a swift meat processing plant. He sees a whole pig go on one end, sausage, bacon, and ham coming out the other. He says, why can't we do that in reverse? Starts the assembly line, doubles wages at $5 a day, cuts days from nine to eight hours, because it's easier to schedule three shifts, and time and production drop. Statistics come into play in 1902, Guinness Brewery. Yeah, Guinness. Uh, bar, uh, hires William Gossett, which is unusual, he's not a chemist. He is a statistician. They're having trouble with batch samples, so he develops a test to test between batches, the t-test. He wants to publish it. Guinness doesn't want him to do it, so he now uses the student name student. So that's how we have students t-test. Statistics continue to blossom under Walter Schruhout working out the Hawthorne plant. He's the guy that came up with statistical process control, the plan do check act cycle. His statistical methods book is still considered required reading in a lot of programs. Duran, or Duran and Deming, Duran is, I guess, the combination of the two, right? Uh, uh, work for him there, and they become important later on. His work lays the foundation for some of the great work we saw in World War II. Uh, statistical sampling allows for greater acceptance and production. We also see here, uh, during World War II, women entering the workforce. They had not been in this type of environment before, so job aids, job standards become the de rigueur, which actually laid the foundation for ISO, ISO 9000. The father of model equality, yes, it is General MacArthur. He's the governor of Japan after World War II. He wants more radios to get propaganda out, but the radio manufacturing in Japan sucks at the time. So they bring in some smart folks from MIT and AT&T Bell who adopt the, uh, the slogan of the Newport News Shipyard to uh, start in producing uh, better radios. They bring in a friend of their, Dr. Deming. Deming worked for Schuhart. Deming is a brilliant statistician in his own mind, but better, more than that, he is the master of the sound bite and communications. He comes up with the 14 points, the seven deadly diseases. Japan adopts his philosophies, becomes an economic superpower. Finally, 1980, NBC provides an NBC white paper. We, he becomes recognized in the United States. Dr. Duran also worked over in Japan, helping him. Also a very prolific writer, his quality handbook is a must-read situation. He is also responsible for really kind of bringing the Pareto principle into the quality circles, and he also has an award named after him, though they really should have hired somebody better to do the engraving on that medal. Some more gurus. Uh, Ishikawa, a, naval, a Japanese naval officer after the war, begins doing quality work, comes up with the Ishikawa diagram, the fishbone diagram. Taguchi comes up with Taguchi methods, sort of... Um, Controversial um, statistical methods, cosmic um, quality is free. Baldridge, uh, working under Reagan, Commerce Secretary, dies in a rodeo accident. The Baldridge Award is named after him. Who dies in a rodeo accident? Um, as, a, as a cabinet secretary. Uh, Six Sigma comes about in uh, Motorola. They want more granularity in their uh, process. Bill Smith, an engineer, comes up with it, but it's Mikkel Harry that comes up with selling it with the black belt and the green belt. Uh, really comes into prime when Jack Welch and Lawrence Bossidy make a bet at who can improve Six Sigma better. Jack Welch wins. Uh, lean with its five things and its eight ways. It's a uh, term uh, coined by John Kravick as an uh, MIT uh, researcher when he's looking at Ono and Shingo's work with the Toyota production system. And uh, work, uh, the word comes out in James Womack's book, Lean Production, in 1990. Okay, I can breathe. Um, <laughs> questions, comments, <laughs> concerns? If I, if I told any stories wrong, uh, please uh, feel free to email me if you have any other stories you want uh, included in there. Uh, that's good too. <laughs>